Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity to make comments on this very important report. I remain Senator Aidi Giang, representing Plateau North in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I want to commend this committee for this very important report and to note that um, they tackled this assignment very dispassionately with every sense of sincerity and responsibility with far-reaching recommendations which if implemented will go a long way to address the current security challenges of the nation. Mr. President, the primacy and criticality of security to the, to the survival of this nation cannot be overemphasized. And the potency and severity of existing security threats to the nation have been addressed by this report. And it is in furtherance, Mr. President, of the resolve of the Senate to prioritize security in its agenda of the Ninth Senate. The report is a practical demonstration of the quest of the Senate to ensure that what we are facing as a country in terms of security challenges is addressed promptly and competently. Mr. President, my comments on this report will be to support the establishment of the National Defense Fund that will facilitate the equipping, training and optimizing of operational capacity of the armed forces. Secondly, I support very strongly, Mr. President, the combined special operations that will identify, destroy camps, hideouts, and stronghold of bandits, kidnappers, and insurgents across the country. Mr. President, I also support the reorganization and restructuring and the decentralization of the Nigerian police with operational and budgetary powers at zonal commands, at the state and even local government formations. I would want, however, to refer us to page 58 on the zonal command structure that has been recommended by the committee. Mr. President, the recommended zonal command structure, according to the committee in page 58, paragraph 4, it says we recommend that the police command structure be decentralized with operational and budgetary powers vested in the zonal commands as follows. And the recommendation for the zonal commands are Kano, Jigawa, and Kasina. That is very okay. Sokoto, Zamfara, and Kebi, that is okay. But, Mr. President, I'm asking for an amendment in paragraph 4C, D, and E as follows. Instead of having Kaduna, Niger, and FCT, I'm suggesting that Kaduna and FCT be left as a zone, while Niger should join Kwara, Kogi, and Niger to make up a zone, so that Nasarawa will come to join Benue, Plateau, and Nasarawa to be one zone. Because if you take Nasara out of Benue and Plateau, the contiguity is broken. So I'm suggesting, therefore, that instead of combining Nasara with Kwara and Kogi, you combine Kwara, Kogi, and Niger. Then Benue, 
Plateau and Nasarawa will be one zone. Then you can now take Taraba, Adama and Gombe to constitute another zone to make it, uh, instead of ending at, at L, it will go to M. So that has to do with my recommendation and amendment on the proposed zonal command structure of the Nigerian police. Mr. President, I also support very strongly the review of the revenue allocation formula so that the federal government will have 45 percent, the states with 30 percent, and local governments with 25 percent. This will empower states and local governments to fund uh, security. Mr. President, to end up my remarks, I want to refer us to page 71 of the report. Page 71 of the report. And to further commend the committee for bringing and highlighting in paragraph 85, the committee notes that it is important to note that the original farmer had a conflict over grazing rights has assumed a new dimension. The herdsman and his opposite number, the local volunteer or Yansa K, have transmogrified into rural bandits and kidnappers terrorizing the northwestern and north central zones of the country. And the committee has recommended the need to have this joint and combined operation that will identify all the hideouts, particularly uh, the occupation of all forests and hilly terrains, and have which will be converted into training grounds and fortifications for the military, police, and other paramilitary agencies. This recommendation is very important, Mr. President, because it will help to give and embed security in communities that are, be, are facing these assaults and attacks by these bandits across the northwest and the north central states. On this note, I want to really commend this committee once again for this very dispassionate, very patriotic. Distinguished, please round up. Uh. I am therefore asking us to adopt the recommendations that are far-reaching and to urge the federal government to accept and implement this report if the current security challenges in the country uh, are to be overcome. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I am Michael Okwemi Bamidele. I represent Equity Central. Mr. President, let me also join the rest of our colleagues in congratulating you and the Ninth Senate for yet another very important milestone. I have taken my time to read through the report, and I must commend the committee for a job so meticulously done. Mr. President, I have some specific observations. I equally refer to page 58 of the report. And of course, while identifying fully with the observations raised by distinguished Senator Giang, I also want to bring to our attention the provision in sex, subsection 4, items G and H, and to request or suggest that I believe so fervently, so fervently, Mr. President, that Lagos should stand by itself rather than Lagos being paired off with Ogun. And instead of Oyo, Oshun, Ekiti, although the four 
states being grouped together. I'm recommending Lagos to stand by itself, Ogun to go with Oyo, and Oshun, Ekiti, and Ondo to stay together. Then, Mr. President, I also specifically refer to the analysis contained on pages 42 to 44. 42 to 44, where the committee talked about governance and public institutions, governance and public administration. Mr. President, there are three very critical institutions or sets of institutions for us to have law and order. A parliament that must continue to make the law and amend the laws to be able to speak to our contemporary security situation. And then, of course, the second critical set of institutions will be the law enforcement agencies, where we have the police and the other security agencies. The third one, Mr. President, has to do with our justice sector and the judicial sector. This report has taken into consideration the steps that need to be taken to reform the justice sector and strengthen the justice sector to be able to handle prosecution. However, one thing that is missing is the fact that I think the committee did not address its mind to also the need to strengthen the judicial sector. The Attorney General in this report has adopted did a good job trying to I mean, espouse the challenges of the uh, Ministry of Justice and the justice sector in trying to prosecute I mean, offenders, terrorists, and other categories of offenders in this regard. However, we may strengthen the justice sector to be able to prosecute and still not achieve our desired goal if the judiciary does not have the kind of strengthening that it deserves. And what am I saying, Mr. President? Part of what I would like us to address our mind to is the need to also work on the psyche and morale of our judicial officers. Let me say yet again, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, that today we have a judiciary whose remuneration, the remuneration of judicial officers, was last reviewed in 2008. So for 12 years in this country, our justices and judges and other judicial officers have been on the same salary. I believe this is an issue that we cannot fail to address when we are trying to adopt a holistic approach that this report is seeking to approach. And the need for also special intervention that the judiciary has been asking for to be able to have the full complement of justices in the appellate court and judges of our various high courts and magistracy. I believe this is an aspect that is missing in this report and it is important that we revisit it. Otherwise, Mr. President, I want to say yet again that the committee did a wonderful job. I thank Mr. President, first let me join other colleagues in commending the job of this great committee headed by the leader of the Senate. While I share their feelings and some of their presentations, I, I have gone through the entire report. And the entire report is centered on one, structure and finance. And Mr. President, I have always argued that if you keep doing the same old things, the same old ways, you get the same old result. I've seen the reports of the various uh, leaders of the various security agencies, and each one is pinpointing on money. I've just taken a bit of uh, a review in my head and said, since 
the advent of Boko Haram in 2009, if you imagine the amount of money we have budgeted and spent on the fight of in fighting Boko Haram and uh, other insurgencies across the nation, and the trillions of naira involved, I'm sure it will cost us about one billion naira analytically to fight one Boko Haram. If you look at the num amount of money budgeted, amount of money spent vis-à-vis -vis the results, so it means that we really have to change the style. And what is missing in this report is that we have not, this committee didn't take out time to look at the relationship between the governed and the governed and the Nigerians themselves. Mr. President, I think that there's so much anger in the system. There's so much of complaints within Nigerians, and so the spirit of patriotism is lacking, giving us something that looks like there's no sense of unity among the Nigerian nation in combating this crime. And so what we have is commercialization of security in Nigeria. And so nobody, people are not making personal efforts, or people are not making sacrifices needed in fighting this. If you look at today, Mr. President, there is so much tension in our political parties, so much tension in our military, so much tension in our uh, executive, tension everywhere. And then no nation can fight a battle of this nature unless there is a unity of purpose where we all feel that we are indeed a nation or a family. And what it takes is is a little bit of uh, adjusting the system rather than thinking that if we're pushing one trillion naira is going to curb crime. Uh, let me say to these red chambers that even if we spent 100 trillion naira today in the fight of this insurgence and insecurity, we might end up commercializing the entire thing. So look, let's just look inwards as a nation. A nation faced with excellent danger, a nation that does not have enough resources. Uh, calling for unity of purpose, bringing back the spirit of patriotism. Because patriotism is not in the fear of the law, but in the love of one's country. That is lacking. And that takes a lot from the executive. I, I would think that by now, we're changing our style, that the, the president, for instance, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will, will begin to will address this nation on the need to come together as a people, because it's not something about soldiers anymore, police anymore. Come together as a people to say, listen, we need to deal with these insurgents. Become a father to all. And, and our governors becoming uncles, getting the whole family together to fight this. Because what this will lead us now is to fund more money. And the more the money, the more the appearance of Boko Haram. Mr. Mr. Senior President, you have often said... I think you can begin to round up. I have always said in this hollow chamber that there is a relationship, co-relationship between poverty and insecurity. And I, I don't seem to have addressed this as what can we do to address the poverty situation, the hunger situation in this country. Because hunger plays a role. What, how can we change our entire economy to, to, to reflect on the stomach of the common man such that people will not take, see, see uh, uh, Boko Haram as an alternative business to, to help their family survive? And I think, Mr. President, that if, if, we, if we really look at the issue of this hunger, issue of poverty, address first. It will cut down the crime. Because if we spend one billion naira in fighting one Boko Haram, analytically, then if the person sees one million, he will, he will throw away his guns. So we need to address this issue. That, that's what I wanted this committee to further dwell on. So I would not go repeating the structure. It's not. Then the other very key point is that we have agreed on community policing here. We all agree that let the communities play a role in partnership with local government, state, and the federal police in ensuring there's community policing and give responsibility to the traditional rulers now 
with their people, with their youth, to say, listen, you must defend yourself. Let's support you from behind. This will go along well also than, uh, in helping us. So, as, as I make my submission, I will advise that this committee will, will maybe go and look back again and see how to address these fundamental issues, which, if not addressed, will control singing the same old songs of, uh, of insecurity. Now that oil price has dropped, again, that's another security we have to worry about. Now coronavirus is around the corner. That's another insecurity bring, that's going to bring a lot of insecurity. So there must be a category statement to start with. The, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should address the whole nation on the issue of this security and the need for us to come together and see our brother, be our brother's keeper and, and, and share the sentiments of nationhood in fighting this, this very crime. So, um, I, I hope God will help us. Thank you. Uh, Chief Whip. Colleagues, James, a war manager, CON Delta South. Mr. President, my highly respected colleagues, uh, just as uh, those who had the opportunity to stand up to speak before me, thanks to this uh, very powerful security Order. committee, hard up security committee for, for a job well done. I, uh, the, a lot of scholarly work is being put into this uh, report. Uh, if you have not read this report before, I recommend that you read through this report. And you see that uh, the chairman and his members, they have truly done a great work here. Just like the conclusion part of their presentation, they said truly they were thanking the senior leadership and the entire Senate for giving them the opportunity to carry out this national assignment. Truly, truly, haven't gone through the report and haven't listened to the chairman of the committee, the leader of the Senate, uh, it is truly a national assignment. Mr. President, uh, it is very clear. Uh, I would recommend one or two things. Uh, this report is all encompassing about the security architecture of this country. And if we take this report as presented the way we are going, uh, it will not do the kind of work that this, this particular report truly deserves. The report as presented, I want to believe that it is important for us to take this report in batches. In batches. I don't want to fall into the temptation of what one or two other persons who spoke before me going through the entire report and all the segments that make up the security apparatus. There are quite a lot of things that, that are inside this report. This report, if diligently followed and implemented, it will solve a lot of our problems in this country. The report is far-reaching, very, very far-reaching, Mr. President. I don't want this report to go the way of previous reports. Truly, truly, they have put in a lot into this report, a lot. They have invi they invited all the major stakeholders in this country. Only a few refused to honor the invitation. And curiously, on page 50, Mr. President, I saw, I have seen uh, number 11, the chairman of National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. He didn't honor this, their invitation. Quite a lot of them are there, but this one, we legislate for the, the, the Drug Enforcement Agency. So why he refused to honor this invitation? I'm surprised, but so many persons attended the meetings of this particular committee. And what we have today is a product of the type of interface, the discussions that they had with all these people. And therefore, this report, Mr. President, in my humble view, must be taken in batches as presented by the chairman so that at every given point in time, let the Senate, as Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
must be seen to have taken a position on every issue. So that we can now present this, this report to the executive arm of government, because everything about this report has to be executed by the executive arm of government. He talked about, in his report, about the, those who are in the National Assembly from the different states to be part of the, uh, the Security Council at the state level. But behold, whether we like it or not, we are members of the National Assembly, a different arm of government. The security apparatus of any government is deposited in the executive arm of government. I don't know, Mr. President. I want to believe that the implementation of that is what is important as far as this report is concerned. But let us do it in a way that at the end of the day, whatever comes out of this place is the product of a collectivity or majority view of the Senate, of the Federal Republic. And then the chairman of the Senate Committee on Judiciary touched on something which is very significant, Mr. President. The, there is no way you will talk about the police and without bringing in the judiciary. So that is one lacuna in this particular report. Because the judiciary is also yearning for reforms. And as a Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, in what we are trying to do, let us bring in the judiciary and then invite them to present their, their own case so that that will also form part of whatever that will be the outcome of the resolutions that will come from this Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Once again, Mr. President, my respected colleagues, I want to sincerely thank the ingenuity of what these chairman and members of this all-important committee they are put into this particular report. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, let me start by commending this ad hoc committee for a job well done because uh, they have taken uh, they have um, taken an in look with an in-depth analysis of the Nigerian security architecture, making broad funding and practical recommendation, which I believe if those recommendations are being implemented will be far from security challenges we are experiencing today. Having said that, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, under military defense sector, that's section 7.1, subsection H, that talks about abolishing cash payments to the officers. Instead, uh, in favor of 30 to 40 percent of basic monthly salary be paid into their accounts directly. How, as feeding allowance, is a welcome development, and in addition, I think an advance of such fund to be paid into the officer's um, account as soon as they are reporting to the... Can we have one house, please? As soon as they are reporting... As soon as they are reporting to the field, Mr. President, to enable them to work without any fear of um, hesitation. Secondly, Mr. President, on the same, under the same military defense sector, at the end of the subsection, it has not said anything about um, cooperation, especially during the period of crisis and uh, at a frontline battle, which I, which I strongly feel it should be looked into. And um, under immigration, under the immigration um, services, that is recommendation number eight, uh, subsection 8, 7 to 9, they uh, talk about um, insurgency and countering. Of, uh, and countering. It concentrates so much on weapons and mass, and mass uh, destruction, urging of acquiring more sophisticated uh, technology. As important as that may be, Mr. President, I strongly believe that we also need to buy in into the local population and conviction. That is to say, nothing has been said about the close collaboration with traditional authorities, especially at the local level. While in the past, villages and wardheads had specific roles in monitoring the arrivals and settlements of alliance from neighboring countries within their, uh, within their communities. I believe drones alone and technology cannot do this. So we have to really look into it under this immigration as well. And also, uh, when we come to constitutional amendment, there are certain sections also that need to be looked into for amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. The report is fully implemented. We will get out of the security mess we are in in this country. Uh, the report uh, is capable. If 
fully implemented, Mr. President, to solve this problem. Having said so, let me go straight to um, page uh, 58. Just as others uh, requested that there should be some realignment in terms of uh, what is uh, on this page, I want to ask that uh, the uh, formation, the command structure of the police that uh, is being proposed to be decentralized. You have on 4A, Kano Jigawa Kazana. And I believe, because Kano is a very large state, about three states in one, uh, we should have Kano and Jigawa instead of uh, having Kano Jigawa Kazana. And then we have B, the Sokotos and Farah KB should stand, it's okay. Whereas, uh, we should have Kazina and Kaduna put together instead of uh, uh, having Kaduna together with Niger and FCT. So Kazina and Kaduna should uh, be put together. They were former, they, they were in one state before, so when you put them together for ease operation, that would be better instead of make, putting Kaduna and Niger and FCT together. Having said so, uh, I want also to commend this committee, particularly in the issue, because the current the contemporary warfare, uh, one will only have an edge over his enemies if you have superiority in the air. Once you have that edge in the air, it's good as defeating your enemy. So it's really very important that we'll encourage the use of drones for surveillance. All where you have these pockets of criminals in, the, in, 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 our, uh, in, in our localities, use drones. Use in the forest. Use drones, locate them, and then use the same drone again to attack them. This is what is in vogue. You see, recently we saw the war between Syria and Russia, I mean, so and Libya, sorry, uh, Syria and, uh, and Turkey. What did, what did Turkey do? It used drones to attack the tanks belonging to the Syrians. Drones, several drones. So this is what we need to do. We should encourage that. This is very, very important. All these criminals along the roads, Kaduna, you know, uh, Abuja, Lokoja, Okini, use drones, get them. 24 hours. The drones will be there in air, 24 hours. And then when you locate them, use the same drone to hit at them. You don't even need to send personnel uh, to, to risk being shot and so on and so forth. I mean, and we can have this technology. There are several, yeah, if the Americans want to say, I mean, uh, let me not go into that. You have several countries that can sell this technology to you. It's not rocket science. So, it is um, really commendable that this has been captured here. But that should not only be restricted to the police, to the, to the army. The police should also have that kind of arrangement. And there should be collaboration between the police and the army in this uh, regard. Again, the report talked about uh, safeguarding our air. That's very important. We need to go as far as getting the Patriot battery or the S-400 from, from the Russians. How much is it? S-400 is about $500 million. If you are seeking $500 million to fund the activities of uh, uh, NTA, why can't you use the same amount of money to have S-400 surface-to-air missile? Anything coming into our country, be shot. I mean, we, sh we should go as far as that. We're talking about our sovereign sovereignty, I mean, the security of our country. So I don't think it's much. We need to go as far as that. We need to modernize our system. Talking about uh, getting uh, something that will... No, 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 no. Let's go to the real thing. Okay. Get the patron battery from the Americans or get the S-400 for the Russians. If Iran can have that, if the Turkey can have that, why can't Nigeria... The Senator should please round up. Mr. President, this is a very good report, but we need to modernize our system. We can't succeed in dealing with the criminals terrorizing us every day if we don't modernize our system. I just submit.
Thank you, Mr. President. I am Ibrahim Shikaro, representing Kano Center from Kano State. Mr. President, my first comment is on page 59 of the report, Roman 10 and 6. The composition of the State Security Council, I see the recommendation leaving out the Director of State Security. Uh, I want to believe it's an omission. If it is not an omission, the committee needs to enlighten us as to why the DSS is not part of the State Security Council. Uh, Mr. President, at the moment, that I know, virtually in all the state security councils, the main members are the Commissioner of Police and the Director of SS. In fact, traditionally, when we go to state security councils, they are the two that are always briefing the council on the security situation in the state. So I believe Director SS should be a member of the state security council. I also suggest that the state director or commander of the state civil defense should be there, and also the leadership of the NDLEA in the state should be a member of the State Security Council, Mr. President. Mr. President, I also wish to make an observation where the committee is recommending all the three senators and all members of the House of Representatives to be members of the State Security Council. I'm afraid, Mr. President, in a state like mine, you may end up with about 50 members of the State Security Council because we have 24 members of the House of Reps. If you are asking all of them and the senators to be members, you're already adding 27 members to the State Security Council. My suggestion, Mr. President, is that while we retain the three senators from the state to be part of the State Security Council, members of the representatives should belong to the Local Government Security Committee. Because by the arrangement that is operating in most states, we do have local government security committees. And I think our colleagues from the House of Reps, who, with all due respect, are largely from individual local governments, are better fit as members of the local government representative council, or local government security council, that is. Thirdly, Mr. President, I wish to suggest another structure of the Zonal Security Committee. The zonal here meaning like if you take Kano, Jugawa, Katsina as the police zone, there should be a meeting point which doesn't exist at the moment, that I know. That the state governors of the three states or two or four, as the case may be, as members of the police covering under the zonal arrangement, there should be a meeting. If you like, maybe the leadership of the committee should be rotational at each meeting. If Governor A presides over today, another meeting, Governor B will preside. But there should be for work. Like my two other distinguished colleagues that have just spoken, I, I prefer that we don't set aside. We have to look at this report line by line group by group, and see how it will be, how implementable it will be. You've done a great job. The committee has done a great job for the executive that will implement this, this report, if they are going to implement, because you have stated the structure of the federal securities that is going to be done at the, at the federal level, at the state level, at the local government level. But again, more importantly, Mr. President, one of us spoke here. What gave rise to this insecurity is as a result of we don't define, I look at it, the executive or the leadership have not defined the Nigerian nation. What do we need? What are we looking for? We are making a law 
to protect lives and property. We are making laws to safeguard our, our actions and attributes and virtues, but we are yet to develop, to really tell people what we really want. We talk about in a, a epileptic power supply, we have not defined why are we going about it. We are now talking about Boko Haram. What gave birth to Boko Haram? We've been talking and we want to save God. We want to protect. We want to ensure that Boko Haram does not you know, rise more than whatever they, ha they are now. And we are make we've come out with this report. Mr. President, I am in alignment with the speakers and with those who have actually taken pains in writing this report to say that we have to look at it one by one because what I've seen is that you have prescribed remedies but who is going to implement these remedies? It is not this legislature, this is the Senate. It is the executive that would actually implement the remedies that you have so provided for here. And so, Mr. President, I want to urge my colleagues that we will look at this report, not just what we are going to take it today and conclude, that we are going to look at it one by one, look at the composition. The composition, fine, in each of the strata is fine, but then the implementation is what matters how it will go down and then bring about the safeguard that we, we are looking for to cure insurgency in Nigeria. So I so commend the writers of this report and commend the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in this ninth Senate that we are up to our responsibility in ensuring that we make good laws for the good good of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President. I like Deputy Minority Leader. President, I understand why quite a number of our colleagues are worried about the enforcement of provisions of this report because they are beautiful recommendations. But everybody's concern is whether they will see the light of the day. I want to comment the leader of the Senate and his team who took time to do a very thorough work. Two aspects of the recommendations appear to be key to me for a way forward that will restore our hope in security, particularly the, the centralization of funding of the Nigerian police force. This agitation had been on for a while now. Since the Fifth Assembly, many people had suggested that there is general lack, lackadaisical attitude on the part of the men of the force because they feel that what is provided has not been able to trickle down to those of them at the local level. And I remember an experience in the Fifth Assembly, Mr. President, where a serving DIG suggested to us in an interaction that decentralization is very, very important. That's to tell us how selfish a typical Nigerian could be. Subsequently, when he became IG, I said, okay, now that you brought this suggestion and you are now IG, I think we can implement this decentralization. He said, no, 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 that it will affect the office of the IG. So that this matter is coming to the fore is a great breakthrough. And then the armed forces, where the chief of defense staff appear not to be performing his statutory duty very, very well because of, you know, infractions. I mean... Point of order. Point of order, leader. Thank you. So, Mr. President, if this decentralization is achieved, it will boost morale of the men of the force, and it will also reduce substantially the interagency rivalry that we have been noticing among the men of the armed forces, even increasing or ensuring that the chief of defense staff takes full charge while the heads of other armed forces, the Navy, Air Force, and Army, answer directly or take instructions from him. That will also give credence to the fact that he is truly in charge, not by name, where he gives instruction and the Army Chief of Staff is giving his own, the Air Chief and all that. So on the whole, the report has the tendency to restore our hope in our battered security architecture, if only it will be implemented to the letter. So I encourage and congratulate this committee. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Albert Bassi. My distinguished and respected colleague, Senator Albert Bassi, Akpan, Akwabuna, is Mr. President. Let me equally commend the committee for a good job. And to also say that it's not about um, 
uh, making this recommendation, Mr. President, because I know that you were also an anchor in the Eighth Senate of a similar um, committee of this nature, Mr. President. But the question is, to what extent has the recommendation of that committee been implemented by the executive? So we just pray, like others have actually stated, Mr. President, that I just hope too that this one will not also go um, the way your committee report equally, uh, equally went. Mr. President, um, the extremely far-reaching uh, findings based on the committee, and I, I think um, I, I, can, I can deduce this to mean that um, the failure of the, uh, the various agencies to be effective is a failure of the Office of the National Security Advisor. Because based on, the, based on its findings, the National Security Advisor is actually supposed to coordinate all other security uh, agencies to ensure effectiveness and to also to ensure harmony and to, ensure, to drive down the, the purpose for which um, the agencies are actually set up. Mr. the President, uh, based on the findings of this, um, of this committee, it is also clear that uh, the agencies are running uh, across, uh, across, uh, across purposes, which means that there is no clearly defined uh, area, of, uh, area of focus where this can be done. And this can only be, uh, could have been achieved by through the Office of National Security Advisor. Mr. President, what struck me most, Mr. President, is uh, the findings of this committee on page, uh, on page 53. And um, item 11, where it says that clearly that the allegations arrived that the quest for personal wealth acquisitions has undermined institutional coherence. This is actually extremely very, very important because if you look at the submissions by all the, all the security agencies, Mr. President, they're all looking for money. As there is no amount of funds that you deploy under the foundation of this incoherence, that will, that will work. And Mr. President, I think the committee also has been very silent. Because uh, no matter how you look at it, it is the morale of the troops that drives, that drives their effectiveness. That there are service chiefs who are, some are cost uh, 24, some are cost uh, 20, uh, 27. Meanwhile, you have cost 34. As by December this year, cost 34 will be retiring. I live with the service chiefs, so I mean, there is no morale on the forces of the troops. So we must call the spade a spade. And that should have been one of the anchors of, uh, of, of, of this report, the morale of the truth. Because there are no aspirations. So there are, there are the solutions that are lackadaisical, they don't care. And they want to frustrate them so that they can go and let the force, uh, let, let, let the force continue, Mr. President. So I think that should, that should be one of the most critical elements of, uh, of, of, of this report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleague, uh, distinguished colleagues, thank you so much. Indeed, as we are all aware that Chapter 2 of the Constitution, uh, Section 14b, the responsibility of government is, of course, the security of its citizens. That's the primary responsibility of government. Uh, I want to emphasize on... Um, Oh, he's a member of the committee. Are you a member of the committee? No, I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Are, are you a member of the committee? Okay. Um, for no, at the moment, at the moment, because that report is what you have signed, you have accepted what, everything inside it. So I will take those who are not members of the committee. What I expect members of the committee to do is to highlight on issues that our colleagues might raise. So if they, any senator indicates that he doesn't understand this or he needs an explanation, members of the committee can, can do so. But because you are standing, you can round up whatever you want to say. You have that benefit. Thank you, Mr. President, for protecting me. You are a good man. Mr. President, sir. Uh, Mr. President, sir, for emphasis purposes, I want to speak on page 55B of this 
document. It was just summarized here. The B component of this chapter, uh, page 55, says all joint operations shall be carried out strictly in accordance with the extant operational procedures provided in the Armed Forces Act. Mr. President, we are all aware that today we have nearly 30,000 Nigerian army in the Northeast. We also have the Navy and the Air Force in the Northeast. Mr. President, one of the biggest problems that is actually militating against successes in this fight against Boko Haram in the Northeast is lack of, is lack of coordination. Here, Mr. President, before me is a document which is actually a document that created the Office of the Chief of Defense Staff. In this document, Mr. President, it says that the duty of the Chief of Defense Staff shall be, one, to prepare strategic and contingency plans for joint operations. And it says here specifically that the joint operations commander shall be appointed by the chief of defense staff, not by individual services serving in that joint operation. It also said here, Mr. President, that the chief of defense staff shall superintend over operations involving two or more services. Mr. President, what we are seeing happening today that is actually impeding in the progress against fight against injustice in the notice is that the army are doing their own, air force are doing their own, police are doing their own, it's like you are tent or Israel. I agree with the recommendation of the committee that some of these things need actually constitutional amendment and, and laws that specify exactly what should be done in joint operations. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, I want to sincerely uh, appreciate the leader of the Senate. I've worked with him. Uh, the the, the whip is, in, is interfering with what I'm saying, so I'll start, my meaning starts again. <laughs> Mr. President, I was appreciating the leader of the Senate. He is a process person who is very detailed. He has given us a very comprehensive and detailed report, which we appreciate. But Mr. President, for me, I will categorize the report into three broad areas. We are going into too much details of dictating to the military, the police, as to how they run uh, their own agencies. What we should be discussing here, basically, Mr. President, to me, should be the broad policy outline that will guide what the government or the executive need to do in order to address these uh, palpable security situation that we found ourselves in. So, Mr. President, for me, which is also reflected comprehensively in the, in the report, is the issue of systematic failure of governance. Mr. President, there is total failure on the part of governance as far as security issue is concerned. Because as a governor, when confronted with security challenges, you need to apply yourself and let the people see that you are serious in addressing the problem. Have we shown that level of seriousness in addressing this? Outside of saying that we have allocated money, well, it's beyond allocations of money. There has to be detailed, systematic um, approach in addressing this security problem. And the, the, the report stated it, said the Office of the National Security Advisor is not funded. The man is not a magician. If we don't have money, how will he work? How will he coordinate the system? He can't. That is failure on the part of government. The other instances that the report also have indicated where there is complete systematic failure. So that is category one. And under that failure is where you find all of what uh, uh, Senator Abbott said on page 53, where you have conflicts, issues of uh, M&E, monitoring and evaluation. 
There is nowhere where you don't monitor, if you give an assignment, there has to be monitoring and evaluation so that you can determine and make projections. We don't have that. The report has captured it. It's part of systematic failure of government. Mr. President, the second one is lack of coordination. Broadly, what the report have talked about is that there is no coordination at whatever level between the agencies that are saddled with this responsibility. If there is no coordination, how can it work? If DSS, for instance, have intelligence and do not properly pass that intelligence to the military, there is no way it can work. And the report captured it completely. Those are areas that I think that we should be talking about. Total lack of coordination within the agencies that are saddled with security responsibility is what is affecting what we are talking about here. And we've been talking about it. Mr. President, now, lack of quality data. All over the world, all over the world, there is no way that any system can operate without data. There is no quality data. Does our data have integrity? No. We have no data that has any integrity. So once we have data that lack integrity, Mr. President, there is no way that you can project and work. And that is why we keep running into problems. It's not just in the area of security. Look at our educational system. Do we have data that we can actually say that is okay, this is what we have, the trajectory that our education has followed? It's the same thing in the security system. So the report captured adequately the fact that we need quality data with integrity. So, Mr. President, for me, as a House or as a Senate, what we need to do is for us to, as recommended also by the report, that we need to look at legislation that can make it imperative for agencies to have M&E departments in their place, M&E, that is monitoring and evaluation, to make sure that they have quality data that has integrity so that there will be a trajectory that can be tracked, to also make sure that the system works. The system is not working. And like Ebert said, let's call it spread, spread. The system is simply not working. The system has to work. And once we look at these three broad areas, systematic failure, lack of coordination, and then lack of quality data, and make sure that we address this. We have addressed the entire report. But, Mr. President, in conclusion, we want to appeal that at the level of leadership, at your level, Mr. President, with a report like this that Nigerians are waiting for, it would be good that at the end of the day, you can sit down with the leadership of this country and discuss this report and let's have their buy-in. Otherwise, the next, the 10th Senate will come back with a report like this, if nothing is done now. So it is also now incumbent on you as our leader to meet with the leadership in order to discuss this report and see how they can have that by Mr. President, I so submit. Senator Solomon Adiola. Don't do that. Mr. President, this is the second attempt. The first attempt is under your leadership as the leader of the Senate. The second attempt, you are the presiding officer of this Alu Chambers. And it is our wish and hope and prayer that this time around, a report like this, we see the light of the day with all these important recommendations as proposed by this very important committee. Having said that, let me also join other colleagues in commending the leader of the Senate for his job well done. A very detailed report. I, will have, I had a buy-in to what Mr. James Manager said and all the members of the Distinguished Committee that said this report should be treat, we should treat this report in faces because the recommendation here we cannot under this sitting exhaust all the recommendation that is contained in this report. But having said that, this committee has graciously tried to put this report into two perspectives. One, the long-term strategic plan and the short-term strategic plan. Going about the long term, it is clearly stated that there is need for us to amend relevant extant laws that is associated with this report. Because bulk of what is contained in this report definitely need amendment of the existing acts, ranging from the police to immigration to federal safety corps and everything. And it is clearly stated there. So more so, we can say this report is still work in progress. Because part of the recommendation of this report is that other relevant committee of the Senate should go ahead and work on the laws 
that is under their purview. For instance, if you look at what was contained in this report about immigration, it's just about five points. If you look into the Federal Road Safety Court, it's about six points. So if you look at that, that shows that a lot of work needs, still needs to be done in each of these apparatus so that we can have an all-conclusive con document that can assist in taking charge of the security situation of this country. Mr. President, emphasis of this report is so much on the internal policing, internal security, while less emphasis are placed on the external uh, security. And I agree with them, because the challenges here has to do with more of the internal security. And page 8.0, uh, page 70 or so, clearly states, among other things, what must be done in the immediate to tackle the internal security challenges we have in this country. It is clearly stated. And I believe that this is one angle that we as a Senate should place emphasis on to try as much as possible to discuss with the executive so that they can, as a matter of urgency, look into these areas as highlighted by the committee and work very closely with what is contained in this report so that we can take charge of what is happening internally. Having said that, Mr. President, I want to align myself with President Okpemi Bamedeli that says that Lagos should have its own command. While Oyo Ogu command should stand alone and Oshu Ekiti Anundo should have the third command. Lastly, Mr. President, the committee make a lot of wide range of suggestions on, especially on the area of community policing. And they clearly state, among other things, that community policing payments should be made to them through the budgetary allocation from the State Assembly. And you and I agree. When the Inspector General of Police was here for the briefing, we said that should be the law that, that they currently have should be brought back to the Senate so that we can bring or inculcate that payment should be made to those who will be doing this community policing. So asking the State Assembly to take charge, an area even in the area of the Zonal Command, that the state should take charge of their budgetary allocation by contributing to that, is bringing more financial hardship on the state and the local government. So I would have expected that this committee would suggest to the Senate a review of the revenue allocation formula as it is. It should be part of this report. Because what it's saying is, in a nutshell, okay, it's there already. Okay, so if that has been suggested, then it will have taken the body away from both the state and the state. So, Mr. President, on that note, let me, command, let me commend the committee for the job well done and said, as I've said, this report is work in progress. It's work in progress because we have to continue to look into it. Other areas that need to be attended to, other security that we have to continue to work on it. I still submit, Mr. President. Senator Bladum. We are making our comments on the report. So, Chief, please, I have a long list and I wish that everyone who has indicated interest to speak speaks. So let's limit ourselves to three minutes maximum. 